How you doing everybody? We're going to have a lesson that's basically titled One Step Begins a Long Journey. Hope you're having a good day and hope you'll listen to these words and uh, uh, consider them because you this involves you. Uh, you are included in this. So one step does begin a long journey. You know, getting to a destination or meeting a goal always has a start, always has a beginning. And there are several things to consider in trying to get to a destination or reach a goal. And first of all, you got to have a des destination in mind before you begin your journey. You know, sometimes uh, the wife and I would get out and we'd say, well, let's go get something to eat. And we'd start making suggestions. Well, let's go here. Let's go there. And then, no, no. And eventually what we end up doing is just going to some place we've already been before. And most likely we're just going to order the same stuff we've ordered before. And so, uh, and then we decide, well, that was dumb. We should have tried something different. But uh, you know what I mean. Uh, a lot of you have that problem. And uh, so it's common to a lot of people. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, to begin the journey, one must first decide where the destination is and where of course, where there's to begin is right here. And there's a lot of factors to consider. And sometimes uh, uh, we have to make determination on, okay, how are we going to get there? Which route are we going to take? Depending on how far you're going. You know, a friend of mine said the shortest distance between two points is the way you know. And in, in many ways, that's probably true. But when you're going to go out on a long journey, you, you sit down and you start making plans. You make preparations. Uh, you got to figure out several things. And we consider what route are we going to take. If you're traveling cross country, you're going to take a northern route or a southern route. The time of year might determine, might make that determination for you. And so we have to consider maybe we might be delayed on the way or hindered in some way. And so it takes planning where we're going. We have to make plans for the journey. You know, factors like uh, uh, how far is it going to be? How much money do we need? How much gas are we going to need along the way? Uh, if we're going to encounter certain types of weather, do we need to pack certain types of clothing? And so we take that. Um, how many stops we're going to make? Uh, how many times we're going to stop and eat? Or are we just going to eat snacks along the way? And uh, deciding maybe we'll eat some restaurants along the way and so you might even want to stop and see a souvenir stand and uh, buy some souvenirs so despite the logistics of getting there the journey always begins with that very first step and usually it's a small step but it usually begins with a small step and that's the way our life goes we started our journey years ago and we started with those little steps and as we go and pro we progress, we, we continue on this journey. So, uh, you know, some people might have an industrious ambition to get out and do something big. And some, sometimes they're just lucky it comes across. They might think of something. Well, how come nobody thought of that before? And then they start selling it and make lots of money. You know, when uh, computers were coming out, Bill Gates started out a little business in a garage. And uh, he, he and a couple other guys were busy and they had an idea and they had plans and they had goals. And guess what? Yeah, Microsoft uh, and, and a lot of other things. And for a while, he was one of the richest people in the world. <coughs> and it usually starts that way. Most companies start out really small. Uh, a lot of restaurants, you know, McDonald's, they started with one restaurant. And all the other restaurants you can think of, they started off with that first restaurant, then they got uh, working and maybe added a second restaurant, a third restaurant. Then others wanted to get involved in it, so they, he, they sold franchises. And now there's some of these businesses, you have thousands upon them, every town you go to might have one. So these all started out really small, and they began their journey with that first step, and then they made adjustments along the way because <clears throat> some people, they, they get out and they have to change their 
You get out and try something. If it doesn't work, well, stop what you're doing and get back to what does work. And some businesses fail to realize that. Some businesses get busy. They, they, they've been successful. Then, well, we're going to try something new, and it doesn't work. And if they refuse to get back to what got them going and staying healthy, then uh, they're going to be in trouble if they don't do that. So we all have to realize we're on a journey, and we started that journey when we were born. And we've taken chances along the way, and for some, it proved to be a failure, and for some, it was successful. And so we, we also know that there's a, another type of journey in which we know how, how to have the success, but sometimes we don't take that journey. So spiritually speaking, everyone is on a journey. And for most people, the destination is unknown to them, and they go through life without planning or preparing. They don't know that there is an eternal life after death. They just go through their life and they take care of themselves and do what they want to do. And they don't take any consideration of why they're here, why, why the, what their purpose in life is, or anything like that. And so <coughs> uh, they don't do anything about it. See, some people realize the potential of one destiny or another. We, we hear about heaven and how wonderful it is. And we also hear about hell and how horrible a place it is. And we've got, we decide then, okay, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do nothing. Well, that's the way most of the world operates. They don't do anything. But if we want to go to heaven, we've got to make preparations. And we need to get ready. And we need to find out what is the proper course to follow. How are we going to get there? What are we going to do along the way? So it's very simple to realize that. And so we want to get on the right pathway, and so uh, we, we do that, and of course we recall the words of Jesus, that there will be few that find the pathway that leads to everlasting life, but many are going to be led towards destruction. So we have to determine what is the difference between the two and work towards doing, doing those right things. So, and of course, as Christians, we all started our pathway on the wrong path. And so uh, that, that's true. But then when we realized we needed to be on the right path, we obeyed the gospel. And we were added to the church and we were put on the potential of having the hope of salvation. Now, just because uh, we signed up for it doesn't mean we get it. Uh, we still have to meet certain qualifications along the way. And so it's just like any contest. You've got to compete according to the rules. And uh, yes, uh, hopefully you'll, you'll be lucky enough to get the prize or you'll be skilled enough to get the prize. It depends what kind of uh, race that you're, you're going through and what kind of rat race you're, you're having to deal with every day. See, we, there's an invitation song that we sing. It says, only a step. You know, we hear the sweet voice of Jesus say, Come unto me, I am the way. Well, that's true. But we make that journey, we start with that one step. We do that. And so that's all we need to do for this journey. Uh, we just stepped out into the aisle and walked down. We started that one step, that first motion. Maybe we'd been thinking about it for a while, and maybe we had just been convinced right then and there. We still make that one step out, and that's what we need to do to begin our walk with Jesus. And so it's a conscious decision, and so maybe uh, if you didn't do it in church, you, you just were convinced, and you asked someone, I need to be baptized. I need to become a Christian. And so you let somebody know, and then you were baptized. So you began your journey. And along this journey, as you go along, you'll find that you are encouraged and you're assisted. There are people who feel an obligation to teach you and to guide you. And the problem is a lot of times with young people, they don't like anybody telling them what to do or they don't like anybody giving them advice. Well, for the most part, people trying to give you advice Basically, they know what life is about. They've experienced it or things very similar to your life. And so when someone gives you advice, listen. Pay attention to it. 
Now, then, after they, they finish giving you advice, okay, now, is that good advice or not good advice? You know, a lot of times, most people are just going to forget it and ignore it until someday they're going to realize, you know what, the advice they gave me was really good, and I should have listened to them. And that's where a lot of people will find themselves, that they, they did this. But these people give you advice not because they want to browbeat you or, or beat you down into submission. They're giving you advice because they care about you. They're giving you advice because they care about your soul. So re remember that. And another thing about Christians, not only do we have the help and assistance of others, other brothers in Christ and some older ones who are basically instructed to teach us, but we also have divine guidance. We have God telling us through the pages of his word how we can get to heaven. And most people in this world, they, they don't know where they're going, so they don't read any instruction books. They don't look at a road map to see where they're going. See, the Bible is our road map to heaven. And so we have that divine guidance. God is helping us get there. And every step along the way, if our goal is to reach heaven, God is helping us. And so we, we have that. And then, of course, we have others help us along the way. It's when we decide to get off that path and do our own thing, now all of a sudden, uh, we don't listen to the guidance of, of heaven. We don't listen to the guidance of those who care about our soul. And we are in the wrong place. And so, years ago, the Holy Spirit of God uh, moved men in the past to write God's words down for us to read. What benefit does that do for us? Well, it teaches us. It teaches us what we need to know. It shows us examples of how people acted before, and if we act the same way, we're going to fall under the same condemnation. And if we learn from that, we decide not to do that, then we are following God's instructions. So we, we follow these instructions from the Spirit, and we can have confidence that God will be pleased, and he's ready to welcome into the, us into that eternal home. And so along the way, we are admonished to keep our eye on the goal. You know, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 talks about running the race with endurance, the race that is set before us, fixing our gaze on Jesus. And he's the author and finisher of our faith. So... To all those who have begun this journey, and we're all on a journey, but we need a, that spiritual journey. We need to get on that spiritual journey. We need to encourage you to hold the course without wavering. Stand fast. And if you have failed, get back on the course because that's the only way you're going to get to heaven. You're not going to get to heaven any other way. And so if you have not started this journey, we can tell you there is no more important journey ever to be realized by any human being. I mean, if you miss heaven, you miss it all. So consider these thoughts. Uh, just a simple lesson here, but uh, something I think everybody could relate to is just because, yeah, a lot of us, we've taken trips and we've, we've gone places and we've had to make preparations for longer trips and we've had to make plans and contingency plans of what if. And so we, we know how to do it. Everybody knows how to live the life that can get them to heaven. A lot of people just choose not to do it. Well, we encourage everyone to see what they need to do to get their life right with God so that the end of their journey will be a positive one and not a negative one. Consider those thoughts. Uh, we're we're going to end it here. If you have opportunity, share this message with others. Uh, share this video. I mean, that's not too hard to do. There's a little share button down there. Just click that and say, put it on my timeline. And help people realize that the journey we're on is so very important. And it's more important than taking a trip to across the country or to see grandma or something like that. This is the most important journey anyone can ever be on. And we encourage people to get on the right pathway. So we're going to end the lesson for now, and hopefully, Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.